pastors having a trivia night on Wednesday. We went last week and it was so much fun. So I hope you can all join. It's really a fun, fun evening. And you learn a lot too. Anyway, prepare yourself for worship.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and to the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promised everlasting life to the world. We ask this morning that you would gather all people into your arms and that you would shelter us with your mercy so that we may rejoice in the life we share together in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So do you all remember Saturday morning cartoons? Do you remember when people used to go and watch Saturday morning cartoons? But before cartoons were on the channels all the time, that it just kind of on Saturday mornings. You remember those days for your kids or something? Uh, uh, a cartoon is a drawing that has uh, real people that have put the sound and the voice to it. So I think they watch it. Playback of it, and they read the script, and their voice goes over the top of it. You, you've seen cartoons, it's a drawing, right? Uh, if you're a child of the sort of uh, born in the late 70s, grew up in the 80s, 90s, uh, you know that there's one sort of very famous name in cartoons in that time. All, almost like every cartoon, all characters belong to this. It was two men whose last names were on the cartoon. Do you know? These names. Hanna Barbera, remember Hanna Barbera cartoons? Everything was, well, almost everything was a Hanna Barbera cartoon. So, can any of you remember this? I can remember these. Uh, I would like for you today to picture the gospel, this story that Jane just read for us, like it's a Hanna Barbera cartoon. Okay? I like for you to remember if you just think about it. the voice of Jane, sort of the, the person, and then the cartoon moving along with it like that, right? Uh, I would vaguely remember, and I've been thinking about this this week, a, a, a really obscure in a barbaric cartoon that I saw some that I barely remember, and we'll see if you all remember it. Uh, it was called The Wonder Twins. Do you remember The Wonder Twins? Yes. You have it. The Wonder Twins. <laughs> you remember it. So it was, these were 
new for twins is a cartoon, right? So you have to stick with that this plot is crazy uh, as a cartoon. So uh, the Walter twins are from somewhere else, they're like extraterrestrial. They had spot ears and they wore purple. So they had like purple cape and purple stuff. And I don't remember watching this a lot, but I was thinking about it this week. It was the twins, Walter twins, the twins. One is male, one is female. The male is named Zalman. Zane and the female is Jane, which they took those names from Tarzan and Jane, and that's where they got those names. And uh, it's the Wonder Twins, and they're from somewhere else. They're extraterrestrial, and so the course of the cartoon would be a problem, and they have these superpowers. Uh, so they would, I think they originated the fist bump, because they would like fist bump. And while their hands were together, like the yellow boom thing would come off in your picture, maybe. <laughs> and they would say, uh, Wonder Twins powered activated, right? And this is when their fists came together, they had like fist pull. And then, they, do you remember their powers? Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew it. This is what I've been thinking about all week, and their powers, and how this looks, how this gospel looks like a hint of our very cartoon. So, uh, you know, the fists come together, the yellow thing comes off, and they have very particular powers. Zon, the male, uh, could take on the form of water in any, it could be steam water or ice. He could take on the form of water. He could also incorporate other water around it. So, you know, they would say, uh, Wonder, Pin, Wonder Twin Power Library, the yellow thing would come off, and he would say, uh, form of a lake, and he would turn into a lake. I don't know the science of this, it's just a cartoon, and this is what he would do. And that's not even what I'm thinking about, I'm thinking more of the female twin. Wonder Twin's power is activated. And she would say, form of, and she could turn into an animal. Form of, and she could turn into whatever animal she wants. Uh, and I guess it's not even just animals, it was bugs. She could turn into like a mosquito. Uh, she could turn into like mythological, like she could be like unicorn or uh, long extinct animals like a brontosaurus, she could turn into whatever she wants. You remember this, the purple? You can Google this afterwards and you'll find that this is really a thing. And this is what I've been thinking about all week. Wonder Twin Powers activate. This is what I do with my time. And then, form, and then Jane is saying form of, and then turning into whatever animal that she wants. I want you to think about that in this morning's gospel, but like it's the thing of our very person. Like it's God's voice imprinted over the top of a cartoon that shows the drone and creation, and it's God speaking over the top of it. And in this case, it's Jesus speaking. And in the cartoon, I want to sort of imagine a group of people coming up to Jesus. He's in a hand of their cartoon. And, and people come up to him, and the gospel says, Some Pharisees came up to him. So it's not all the Pharisees. I don't know who, what this group would look like. I'm not sure if they would be like shivering because they're scared. I'm not sure if they would be kind of uh, happy. I'm not sure what they would look like. You can imagine them however they want. And they come up to Jesus and they say, Don't go to that town. This is the problem of the curfew. Don't go into that town because if you do, you're going to be in trouble. Don't go into Jerusalem. You'll be in trouble if you go there. And Jesus' reaction to this is, and it's like, uh, it's like the King of the Earth stole this, like he fist bumps and he's God and you know, power activate. And then he says, form of, and then this is what he says. Form of, that bad guy has form of a fox. Form of a fox. That hairy guy who's after me, form of a fox. Now, if hair is a fox, the bad guy is a fox, what should Jesus be? Because in the Old Testament, God is likened to all sorts of animals, and they're all pretty majestic animals. Uh, you know, here's you know, the bad guy is Herod, form of a fox. Jesus should, if, if Herod's going to be a fox and he's the bad guy and Jesus is going to be the good guy, he should take the form of a pretty cool animal here because of fox, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, in Hosea, Hosea talks about God as a leopard. Maybe you could say form of a leopard. There's Old Testament uh, readings about the wings of an eagle, like God raising up on eagle's wings. Form of an eagle, he could have said that. Uh, 
of the Lion of Judah. Remember John called the Lion of Judah? Jesus could have said, I'm a, in the form of a lion. He could take all these forms, compare it to the bad guy, we don't like the bad guy, uh, the beast, the fox, and look, but look at the form Jesus says that it takes. And this is what head scratching at this point in the cartoon of why this form. Jesus, you know, God powers activated the Inquabera cartoon. Tell that fox, form of fox, and that's the bad guy. And I'm going to be form of a mother hen. And this is what he's turning into. Because that's what it says. I would love to see God. I would love to be a hen, like a mother hen. This is what the gospel says. And this is what I'm picturing all week. And I'm wondering, out of all the majestic animals of the Old Testament, why this is form of a hen. I'm going to stop for a minute. Keep the Hanna Barbera thing in mind. I'm going to say uh, that you and I, uh, and everybody that I know, does this to some degree, where we sort of simplify uh, things down to either or things. Uh, like, you know, uh, uh, I guess if you were to look at the news now, it would be like, tell Putin that fox for me. And, and you know, all these innocent people over here, the good guys, the bad guys, uh, you know, uh, here's, the, here's the donkey, here's the elephant, here's the bulldog, here's the young pup. You know, we're all the time sort of form of animals because it's simpler to classify things. But I think the important thing here, and I think why we're gathered together, even though I'm talking about cartoons, is to hear that this particular case is God sharing with us how creation works. And God offering us a way to think of creation differently. And in this story, this is God's creation, it's the cartoon, God has created it, it's the visual part of it, it's the thing that's out there. It's God's voice that's written over the top of it. And when we try to be the people who are going to say who's which animal, we're sort of uh, taking the power on ourselves. In this story, it's God that has the power and the form of things. And it's for us to sort of get sit and hear. And the thing that Jesus does here and talks about is offering you and I an entirely different way of thinking and being. And it's the way of eternal life, it's the way of salvation to a people. Alright, I'm going to jump back into it. We often do this thing where it's like elephant, donkey, bulldog, we dog, like we, you know, we do all this. But in the story, we're supposed to let Jesus. God be the voice that rose over top and explains. And in, in, in this story, remember I said, Hair is the fox. Jesus is saying, Form of a fox. And then he says, Form of, and he could have been all these beautiful, wonderful, powerful animals. And he says, Form of a mother hen. That's an odd choice. Uh, if you've ever watched the Wonder Twins, they make all sorts of odd choices too. Like you would turn into snow and she would turn into a mosquito and the, and the thing was like how are these two things going to work together to solve this problem and that's sort of what this is why a mother hen think of what a fox is and think of what a fox does to a chicken coop why a mother hen the reason is because in this God's voice is writing over the top of the drawing of creation it's making a pronouncement about who and I, who you and I are. This is not just the story of the form of, you know, Herod that Jesus takes on. It talks to us about who we are and who God makes us. Tell that fox, form of a fox, form of a mother hen. Now think of a fox and what it does to a chicken. Uh, all the animals Jesus could have selected, they select this one perfect because it makes a pronouncement about who you and I are. Who are we in this story? According to the cartoon, what are we? Well, you and I are the chicks that are at times gathered under the wings of that mother hen. Or in the case of this story, you and I are the chicks that Jesus stands before and gets in the way of that fox. Why? Why get in the way of that fox? Why distract the fox? Why 
pronounce you and I as chicks. Because this tells us who we are. And this is a proclamation of who God wants us to be and the way that we can live to have eternal life. We spend so much time trying to pick up, you know, pick on God's job and say form love and tell everybody what animal they are and what animal we are and where we fit. But clearly the story is already telling us who we are. And that we're free to be that and free to live this way. This story is about who you and I are. And in this story, four love chicks. And this is who we are. The ones that Jesus stands before. Between the thought, between the danger, and following love. And we're over here, and because of who Jesus is, we're now free to be and live in our own way. So I've been thinking about animals all week. I've been stuck on this form of thing. I've been the joke, you know, I've had that stuck in my head. Earlier this week, I sent out to you all an email about spirit animals. Did anybody see this email? I sent out an email about a survey that we could take about, about spirit animals. Uh, so there's a, either a Disney or a Pixar movie coming out in the next week or few weeks that's about a girl who can like, be a red panda. It's about a girl who behaves or acts and turns into a red panda. Have you seen previews for this? And you already saw the movie? It's already out? Boy, you're, you're quick on the movie. What's the name of this movie? I think red is in the title. So she can be an animal, like a form of an animal. Turning red. Turning red. Uh, and she can turn into a red panda. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've seen uh, all sorts of things that are like if people go on Facebook and then they'll take these surveys and they'll be like, I don't know what's name. So I just Google spirit animal, like survey for, an, for whatever animal. And then I put those questions into a survey and I put the title to St. Stephen. Because I wanted to see. Jesus tells us that we're chicks, but I wanted to see how we saw ourselves, like who we thought we were. So I sent out this survey, I don't know if I did it, but lots of people did. And uh, I took, then I took the results of this and put it into a quiz to see what our spirit animal is. Jesus tells us that we're chicks, but I wanted to think about well, who we can be or how we see ourselves as the people of St. Stephen, okay? So uh, I asked, what's your moral alignment? You saw this survey, you saw this. And this is a hard question because it's like, what does that even mean? Uh, this is the way sort of characters fit in the story. Uh, and you've probably hopefully maybe seen this in an English class or something. Neutral evil, neutral good, uh, lawful neutral, lawful good. You've seen like which characters. So we came out, but we want to see ourselves as lawful good. That's a shocker that when you all fill out a survey and hand you back into the past there. You want to say lawful good. So this is what I put into the quiz, and wink, wink, we'll all say that's what we are, lawful good, okay? Um, if someone said something mean to you, what would you, what would you do? Uh, I'd say that's not very nice. Remember, we saw the survey. Uh, I'd say that's not very nice. Uh, I'd say I don't care what you think. Uh, shrug your shoulders. Ignore them. I'd say shut up. Or I punched them. None of you said punch them. <laughs> because again, there's a spirit animal in the back who's going to see this, so I won't put punch them. So if someone said something mean to us, we picked, the majority of us picked ignore them. And then this is what I put into our spirit animal quiz. Right? Uh, pick a place you'd like to live. Two people who, I don't know what to make of them, put somewhere cold. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know who put that. That's what people would. In the forest, in the country, in a big city, by the mountains, by the beach, was the one that had the most responses. So that's what I put into our spirit animal quiz. Uh, pick something to eat. I don't know how this fits being a spirit animal. We'll pick something to eat. Uh, pizza, salad, uh, bacon, burger, sushi, prime rib. Everybody was like, this is going to the basket. So they <laughs> form up. And then we said, we would eat a salad. Right, I, I'm questioning this, but this is what I put in because people sent me this. Right, I, I can only put in what people gave me. Um, it's your friend's birthday and you forgot to get them something. What do you do? Um, uh, people in this survey said, and it was almost everybody said, just tell them the truth, you do have to give them something. So that's what I put in. Uh, 
Um, a person you don't like wants to hang out with you, but you really don't want to. What do you do? Uh, this one was really close. Some people said why and say you're busy. A person that wants to hang out with you, you don't want to. But this was a pretty high score. Why and say you're busy. Um, but the highest score we got to get in, this is for sure, so we got to have the right thing in that one. Give them a chance to think and think that and hang out with them and see if your first impression is wrong. That's what we do. So I put that into the quiz and then it was pick your favorite breakfast. We picked French toast and I put that into the quiz. And then it was pick your favorite dessert. There were all these options and we by a large majority picked pop and I put that into the quiz. So you want to know what our spirit animal is? After all this, I did this quiz online. Do you want to know how we see ourselves or how we want the past or how we want to look? This is like our spirit animal. We want to see what it really came out as. You ready? When I took it, it came out as a tortoise, by the way. That's true. I took this and it's about a turtle. And it, it, like, uh, you're an old soul or something. I don't know. But I, I did not put it in style, but I don't know how it came out as a tortoise or what it came out as. For you all, for St. Stephen. It came out as an author. It said that St. Stephen, when he made this together, we like the spirit animal and an author. Cheerful, want to be friendly. Uh, like attention, like to talk and visit a lot. Full of energy. Now, do you think this is St. Stephen's spirit animal? I think it's pretty accurate, to be honest. I think it fits pretty well. But here's the thing. In today's gospel, we're being told very clearly what we are. And you and I are the chicks. And the way that this works is, is that Jesus says that bad thing takes on the form of a fox, and I've taken on the form of this mother hen, and I stand between you and that bad thing to offer you a whole life, a whole span in front of you. And this is really what we are. I'd like for you to picture it as this, and to remember what Jesus does for us by getting us out of that uh, thing where we have to be the ones to pick what animals what and how it works. That we're over here and we're the chicks, and this is the way that it works. We are God's children, and as God's <laughs> children, the story tells us that we're the chicks. But it also tells us that we're given a sort of uh, superpower, a sort of Anna Barbera weird superpower. And that in Christ, we might be the chicks, and this is clearly who we are, and this is who God says that we are, but we're given uh, the power to be the ones who, in Christ, say, yes, we're the chicks, but, and this is where we do the fist bump, and together we can take on the form of otter, we're really the chicks, but we can take on their form, and this is who we can be because of who Christ is for us. People who befriend others, people who uh, live with energy or take care of others when they need it, and so this morning is a Hannah Barbera cartoon, and I want you to picture it. Tell that fox from the form of a fox. And I'm going to take on the form of a hen. And I'm going to gather all of these chicks and I'm going to stand between them and I'm going to free them to live a life of abundance and joy. And the life looks like this that you and I are God's chicks, God's chicks, free to take on the form. In my case, I guess it's a tortoise, to take on the form of the animal, the action the way that we want to be and this is who we are this is the story of this morning's gospel i picture it all week like a hand of heart in a cartoon but you all can make it real amen <laughs>
started to close there. Into modern times, the whole church has begun to anticipate Easter together through acts of repentance and spiritual renewal in the season of Lent. Since we're in the season of Lent, it is therefore appropriate that we would be gathering together to review the basics of our faith during this season. To do so so that we might all be renewed by our baptism and covenant, that we may embrace who God requires us to be, and be made ready together for the celebration of Easter. This morning, as we continue working through Luther's small catechism, uh, this is found on page 18 of the bulletin. What is the office of the keys? It is that authority which Christ gave to his church to forgive the sins of those who repent and to declare to those who do not repent that their sins are not forgiven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should confess that we are guilty of all sins, even those which are not known to us, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But in private confession, as before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which trouble us in heart and mind. What are such sins? We can examine our everyday life according to the Ten Commandments. How we act for a father or mother, a son or daughter, a husband or wife, or towards the people with whom we work, and so on. We may ask ourselves whether we have been disobedient or unfaithful, bad tempered or dishonest, or whether we have heard the implement of our perjury. How may we be assured of forgiveness? Merciful God. 
God. Today we especially pray for Michael Ball, Ted and Jackie Jarmal, Paul and Nancy Moser, Tim Taylor, Jack and Betty Ann, Debbie Smith, J.J. Goldberg and the Lutheran Campus Ministries, Carl and Sharon Goldmans, the people of Ukraine, and all those we hold in our hearts. Merciful God, this is our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are limited and who now rest with you. On the final day, give our souls to the end of our lives. Merciful God, this is our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share it. Striving in God, in Christ, you protect us from things that may consume us or take our well being away, and you bless us with the fullness of your creation. Called to this place by your Holy Spirit, we now gather at your feast, where you promise to offer us the food that satisfies. We ask, gracious God, that you would take and use what we offer here that you would come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. In love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You gave your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their hands in prayer. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
first of the new development that in here. And uh, so this week, I spent all sorts of time searching for a particular Easter game that I could not find. I looked everywhere for it, and I was going to give one to everybody. I was looking for individually wrapped peeps, because we're all chicks. And I was looking for individually wrapped peeps, but I could not find them. And I have to tell you the truth, I don't want peeps anyway. Tells us that we are the chicks, that he is the mother hen, and gathers all of us under his wings. Taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. It's given for you. This is the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ.
Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you feed us with your body, the bread of life. Filled with your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Jesus will meet you on the way. Thanks be to God.